The devil targets our hearts. There's a reason God's word tells us, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Are you guarding what you allow to come into your heart? Let me go a step further and ask you this. What is the state of your heart? Hebrews 3 verse 15 says, While it is said, Today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. But what does it mean to have a hardened heart? Why would the devil seek to have your heart hardened by sin? Well, someone who has a hardened heart, they're spiritually blind. Such a person is insensitive toward the things of the Lord. Such a person is only focused on chasing after their own desires, not the things of God. A hardened heart rejects God. The greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. So now consider this. Perhaps the devil's greatest desire is to stop you from being obedient to the command here, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Perhaps the devil's greatest desire is to prevent you from giving God all of your heart. So then what does the enemy do? He'll be subtle. He'll be subtle in tempting and leading your heart's desires away from God. So, he'll constantly dangle people, things, desires, anything that's not of God. He'll constantly dangle that thing in front of you, anything to distract you, so that he can then erect a false God in front of you that you don't even realize you have. Another area that Satan targets in our lives is the body. Romans 12 verse 1 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Let's focus on those words, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Our bodies should be given to the Lord as vessels through which he can work. But you see, the enemy will tempt you to defile your body. And how does he tempt our bodies? The main way is sexual immorality. From the beginning of time until now, many, many men, many women have managed to overcome great trials. They've managed to overcome tests of faith, but then they crumble because of sexual sin. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Sexual sin is a sin that we are strictly told to flee. Think about it. How serious must it be for the Bible to use the word flee when talking about sexual sin. Dear listener, don't open the door to sexual sin. Flee from it. Because if you open the door to it, the devil will get a foothold in your life. And only Jesus can set you free from those kinds of chains. Now my final point when it comes to the areas that the devil targets to enter your life it's to do with your words, your mouth, your speech. The devil knows we can cause much damage with our mouths if we do not bring them under God's control. The enemy wants you to gossip. The enemy wants you to murmur and complain. He wants you to speak negatively, to speak with profanity all the time. He wants that because he knows the power of your words. But let me remind you, our mouths should be declaring the word of God. Our mouths should be testifying the goodness of the Lord. Our mouths should be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now in summary, be aware of the areas in which the enemy comes after you. 
Be aware of the enemy's tricks, but don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. I want to remind you that regardless of how the devil comes at you, Jesus Christ can protect you, defend you, and deliver you. But this only happens when you run to him, when you seek the Lord. So don't let your guard down. Be aware. And now let us pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you because you are awesome and mighty. Lord, you've said in your word, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. We open our hearts to you, Lord. Purge us of all sin. Set us free from pride, from anger, from unforgiveness. Help us, Lord Jesus, so that we would be transformed in mind and heart. Help us to be believers who really strive to be like you, Lord. Give us a strong, pure passion to follow you and to be an imitator of Christ. The Bible says in Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19, These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Lord Jesus, I pray that your blood would wash us clean. Let us not have a proud look, Father, but instead give us a heart that is humble. Let us not have a lying tongue, but instead, Father, I pray that our lips would always be full of praise for you. I pray that there would be no corrupt talk that comes out of our lips. Like the Bible says in Psalm 141, verse 3, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Touch my life, Lord Jesus, and remove this heart of stone from me. Remove this wicked and deceitful heart from me. Give me a new heart, Father, a heart with new desire a heart that has a passion for godly things, a heart that realizes there is a daily need for you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would give me a heart that chases godliness, a heart that's drawn to your presence. Psalm 19 verse 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord my rock, and my redeemer. I pray that the way I live my life, the manner in which I walk and even how I talk, may it all be led by the Holy Spirit. Lord, take all of me, everything, from my actions, my thoughts, and energy. May it all be pleasing to you. Lord, I want it all to be for your glory. Holy Spirit, lead me. Teach me and help me, so that all I do would be to glorify the Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would help me to become an imitator of Christ. Teach me how to walk in love. Teach me how to practice righteousness. King Jesus, rule my life. I desire for you to have the final say in my life. I submit to you. You're my number one. You are my everything. I bless your precious name, Lord. And I thank you for hearing my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them.
Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Hebrews 12 verse 2 reads, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me?